now as you can see the war is already begin between Rutherford and Niels Bohr I do not know whom you are going to support but I am going to support none of them because they both failed <laughs> okay but before going to their failures and talking about all the such things let's see that what is the maths given by our Rutherford so as I told you Rutherford is quite pretty much inspired from Newton so he taught what Newton has done Newton has taught us force so he used the force so force is equal to not mg here because we are not considering the mass here so we're gonna take centripetal force mv square by r as it is satisfying the model thing the electron is negative nucleus is positive at the center so it is something like centripetal force so he used the centripetal force and he used the coulomb's force what is the coulomb's force well not very much difficult one by four pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by r square r is the distance and q1 and q2 are the charges as you have seen in the electrostatic thing so here he decided this is the electrostatic force here he decided to combine these two forces and come up with a result so when we solve these things mv square divided by r is equal to now in place of q1 and q2 he simply put electron means e e is the charge here so we have e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r square now we can see that what will going to happen in this case r get cancelled out with 1 r and we finally have m v square is equal to e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r Hmm. so this is the result gave by Rutherford well pretty much simple as you can see centripetal force is equal to the electrostatic force here we took the assumption that q1 q2 is equal to e and the distance between them the nucleus and the electron is r and we just equated it so that's pretty much simple on that basis he taught us kinetic energy and the potential energy so let's see the potential energy first so as we know that potential energy is actually v or u whatever you have studied so that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 divided by r or you can write it as e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r here we also assume that q1 q2 is equal to e the considerations remain same now it's time to see the kinetic energy which is a little bit more interesting kinetic energy is mv square by 2 so as you can see from the previous one that mv square is is equal to e square divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r so we're going to use directly that one so in this place we're going to have 8 pi epsilon naught r and in this place we have e square here in the potential energy we can also include the negative sign because the potential is always negative and on the charge basis too it is negative not here we have included that's simple like for here okay so kinetic is not negative and why it's 8 4 to the 8 that simple here is 2 now we have all the things done now what's the total energy total energy or mechanical energy is actually the sum of the kinetic energy plus potential energy well you can solve that but I'm not going to solve that I'm going to just write the answer e square by 8 pi epsilon naught r because I know the result so I'm not going to solve that but you can solve that for your convenience and can see the result which is pretty much the same in all our cases so now it's done for the real force model we have the total energy now we're going to see what 
next in the next one take care god bless you